What's up you guys, it's the Journey Dad here. First off, I just want to apologize. I am still a little bit sick. So if my voice kind of goes out or if my throat sounds stuffy, I apologize, but we're just gonna, we're gonna work through it, okay? We're gonna do this together. Uh, I just want to talk to you a little bit about breakups today. We've all gone through breakups, and it's especially hard if you have kids. You become a single dad or you become a single mom. It's a whole new ball game when, when you have kids and, and you have a breakup with the uh, other parent of your child. Um, so I just want to give you guys my little story, my little tips and tricks of what I've done or how I've dealt with it. It's completely unscripted, true, full story. I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys today. It's going to learn a lot of stuff about me that you guys don't know. So let's get into it. All right, you guys, so I've done research on YouTube. I've seen the videos on breakups and everybody tells you the same advice, the same, it takes time, be patient, surround yourself by people you love. Yeah, that's great advice, that's, that's all good and well, but the videos are never personal. They never tell you personally about their story, something that you can relate to. So today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna get real personal with you guys. So my ex-wife and I broke up a little bit over two years ago. Our daughter was only six months old and the last two years have been the hardest years of my life. Breakups are never easy. But before I even met my ex-wife, I was a drug addict. I started doing drugs uh, towards the end of my high school, right, right after high school, and I did painkillers. I took a lot of pills. And so after my breakup, I immediately wanted to go and do drugs again because it was familiar. It was something that I thought would numb the pain. But I knew that I had a baby girl. I knew I had a six month old daughter who needed me to be clear headed and take care of her, do what I needed to do as a dad. As much as I wanted to go back to drugs, I didn't. And I'm only telling you about my previous drug addiction because I know there's a lot of you out there who do deal with substance abuse issues or whether it be drugs or alcohol. And I know that you always wanna go back to that because it is familiar. But the best advice I can give you is to just not do that. It's taken me pretty much this full past two years to get to the point to where I'm at now. And I'll admit, when it first happened, all I wanted to do was lay in bed. I lost my job. I had a really good paying job as a, as a distribution manager for a very uh, well-known scooter company. I ended up losing my job because I just couldn't get out of bed. I was depressed all the time, didn't want to wake up, I didn't want to go to work. And I lost two more jobs after that. And I started to realize that it was really affecting my daughter and the quality of her life because my financial resources weren't stable. And so I had to take a look in the mirror and really look and reflect on what was most important to me. Feeling sorry for myself and laying in bed and not wanting to get up and take care of the stuff I needed to take care of as a dad or push through it and kick my own ass really and get myself in gear. And yes, I did. I, I surrounded myself with people who loved me and people who were there for me and supported me. And that helped a little bit. I'm not going to lie, it did help a little bit. But when you have a broken heart and you've been with somebody for so long, I was with my, my ex-wife for four years. And it's just so difficult to get over that time that you guys spent together. I mean, you, you, build, you build a home, you build a family together. You get used to all the little quirks of somebody and all of a sudden they're just gone and you wake up in the middle of the night and you, you, you feel like they're there, but they're really not. And so you turn over and they're just not there. And it's the worst feeling in the world and that's happened to me so many times in the last two years, which really contributed to me not wanting to get up in the morning. I wake up in the morning and roll over and just see an empty bed. And it was very difficult to deal with. Now, after losing a couple of jobs because of my own issues, I, that's when I realized that I needed to change something in my life. That's when I started reading books. I started reading self-help books. I started watching self-help videos on YouTube. I started to sit down and really think about how I can change myself so that I can be happy with myself again. Because at, at the time of the breakup, I just I wasn't happy with myself. I, I didn't want to be or even be around myself. And it's horrible because you don't want to be around anybody else because you, you want to isolate yourself. But at the same time, you don't even want to be around yourself. And that's where the danger comes in because that's when you turn to, to drugs or alcohol or 
anything you can to to even escape your own self and your own reality. The only thing that has truly worked for me is to just dive into something and distract myself completely from the thought of her or the thought of being alone because the number one cause for having depression, especially after, like after a breakup, is you feel no value in yourself because somebody has left you. Somebody does not want to be with you anymore, so you feel like you have no value, that you have no purpose. And so that's where the depression stems from, is not feeling value, not feeling like a, a sense of self-accomplishment. Set little goals for yourself every day. Write them down on a piece of paper. Actually get a physical notebook and actually write down little goals for you to do the next morning or the, or the next day. And as you do those, you just you cross off each, each one. And that feeling of actually seeing something that you've written down that you've told yourself to do and then accomplishing that and crossing it out from your list, you get a very high sense of satisfaction with yourself. And it could be something as simple as making your bed. That was one of mine, was just waking up and making my bed every morning. So basically, you, you have to give yourself a purpose the night before, then the next day, fulfill all those purposes, so by the time you go to bed at night, you can look at your list and go, wow, I did something today. I did everything that I wanted to do today. Another tip that I've learned from is, is reading self-help books. Now, I hate to read. I really do. I can't stand reading. But promise yourself you're going to read 10 pages a day or 20 pages a day. By the time you're done with those 20 pages and you can close that book, especially like for me, if you hate reading but you finish those 20 pages, that gives you such a high sense of self-confidence or self-accomplishment. The final thing that I've done with the distraction part is I've started this YouTube channel and it's something that I have to learn and teach myself and so I'm spending a lot of time researching on how to do this type of stuff, how to market online, how to edit the videos. It's, you can, it can get very frustrating but that frustration is coming from me trying to accomplish a goal and it's not, the frustration is not coming from the breakup or, th or thinking of, of my ex. Find something that you're passionate about, something that, something that you can create and at the end of the project, you can look at it and go, wow, when I started this project, I had no idea what I was doing, but I was able to come up with a, a finished product that I'm proud of. So that's the best advice I can give you guys is just keep yourself distracted, find a purpose. You gotta give yourself a purpose because everybody has value. No matter what happens, you have a value of something in life, okay? And if I could just help one person, then I've done my job. That's all I'm setting out to do is to just help at least one person to realize that they're not the only person in that position, that there's other people out there who go through the same thing. And this is my true story. This is, this is really what I'm doing. I'm actually starting online businesses and learning how to market and learning how to do social media marketing, making YouTube videos. I run a pet care blog, like I've said before. My pet care blog is starting to make money. And it, that gives me such a high sense of self-satisfaction. And honestly, it's been a little over two years since my ex and I have split up, and I don't care. I really don't, guys. I'm, I'm happy with myself because I've given myself purpose again. I've given myself value. So now that when I look in the mirror, I see value within myself, and I like myself again. So that's the best way to get over a breakup, guys, is to learn to love yourself, like yourself, and give yourself value again. Stop looking for other people's approval. Stop worrying so much how other people value you. You gotta learn to value yourself before anyone else will see the value that you bring to the table. I know I just kinda rambled on, but I hope that with being transparent, like with my drug issue in the past and what I did after the breakup, moving forward into where I'm at today, I hope that you can relate to it somehow and realize that you're not the only one out there. You just gotta keep pushing. You gotta find yourself value. That's the biggest thing. Give yourself value. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the love and support. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram at The Journey Dad. There's going to be a link in the description below. And I'll see you guys next week.